Hello, everyone. This is Ty, a.k.a. The Flip Man. Tonight's Flippinar. I'm glad everyone that has made it so far will have more people to come on. But uh, one of the strong points about me, I guess one of the positives, is that I'm punctual. <laughs> so uh, we're going to go ahead and ride, ride on this. And people that uh, join us, uh, well, come on. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen here. Okay, we're uh, in screen sharing mode. I'm assuming you all can see my white space, white background with the logo, with the title, and the subtitle. Wholesaling houses, no cash for credit, step by step. Yes, thank you, Don, for confirming that. Uh, co wholesaling, JB deals is a topic, it's something that I haven't done a lot of, but like many of the things in residential real estate, I have actually done. So, um, I'm going to, that's going to be the topic for tonight. For those that have never been on one of these, um, there's a process that I go through to get to the, to the subject of tonight. Um, as always, we're going to have a question and answering period after um, we go through the topic and some more house cleaning. Um, also, um, don't let me forget about the free about the free courses. Please don't let me forget to give those away. I don't think Darren is going to be on tonight. I haven't heard him say tonight. So uh, please do not let me forget <laughs> the free courses. Remind me if you have to often because I will, I will forget. Trust me, I will for forget. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and, uh, as I said, the topic tonight is going to be co-wholesaling. Uh, JV deals, and and I'll get into what I my definition of it and the process that I've went by and what I would recommend. Obviously, there are a lot of ways to do things. So let's go ahead and um, start to go through the, the pages here. Um, just as a disclaimer, attorney recommends that we do this. Uh, you're not going to make ten thousand dollars a month if you don't do anything. Most people know that, but we just have to say it. Um, if you're not aware uh, of me and somehow you stumbled onto this flip of NARS, I might have may have uh, recommended it, uh, but uh, I have a library of videos on YouTube that anyone can take advantage of uh, free 200. You won't believe it um, when you see all the information I provide, pretty much everything you need to know about, not pretty much everything you need to know about wholesaling houses. You don't ever have to talk to me. Um, they say I put my phone number out there. Most of y'all know, well, some of y'all know, I actually, you call or text me, I respond. Or if you call me, I pick up. You call me, I'll call you back. Just, just the way it is. <laughs> so um, I just wanted to make you aware of my YouTube channel, which is flipman.net. Also, my website is flipman.net man.net where you can access those exact videos but you can also sign up for my coaching and courses there also i wanted to mention the deals that we have available a couple of students and i um have some deals available on the commercial side of the game and one of them is a rite aid in the state of pennsylvania uh, we're paying a referral fee of sixteen thousand five hundred. Uh, to anyone that provides a buyer, really that cut and dry. I'm not asking you for any money or anything. I'm just asking you for help on things that I don't personally like to do. We're working on finding buyers, and hopefully we will find before our our contract ends on the property. But this is one of the deals we put on the contract with no money down. This is a $2 million property, $2.185 million. No money down, no earnest money on the contract. No person in between... The seller and I, just my, uh, the student and my name are on there as the buyers and then the seller. That's real. So same thing with this property here, family dollar. 
Uh, 8,500, this, this one is in Ohio. We're paying a uh, referral fee on this one of $8,500 for a buyer. On this Wendy's in the state of Tennessee, uh, 11,500, we're paying for a buyer. Uh, you can gather the information as you see the website uh, at the bottom there, triplenetcash.com, or as some say NNN cash, but it's really just an acronym for triple net. Uh, triplenetcash.com. Um, now you see that phone number there, you can call me on them, but I have my other number too. So this is more, that other number there, just somewhat uh, know where my leads are coming from and how effective they are. But this Wendy's property, understand you're not selling the Wendy's franchise, you're selling the property. Wendy's, Wendy's is leasing the property from the current owner and we're just mm -hmm. trying to find a, a different owner. It, it's really just that simple. So, um, Again, as I mentioned earlier, uh, two free courses uh, given away uh, at the end of the uh, Flip Bernard tonight. Uh, what do y'all think about the logo uh, here, uh, flipman.net? Is it better than what I had before? If you remember, uh, you can place your comments there. Um, don't forget, uh, if you need private money, service I've hooked up with, with uh, Keith Yaki. Uh, privatemoneylist.net you can go there a lot of you all are here because you submitted your phone number um through that site and i text you say hey come join the flip or i text you a video about a student uh, that spent thirty two thousand dollars recently out of uh, baltimore mm -hmm. if you're interested in the commercial side of the game similar to what you've seen on those deals that we have referral that's where they come from my students and i put those deals together i work with them directly if they want me to i'm going to coach them regardless but they normally want me to work directly with them so if you're interested in that you can go to flipthisbuilding.com and sign up and become a student on the commercial side of the game it's more expensive than the wholesaling houses and apartments but the, the paydays are bigger you can just see from the referral fees that we're paying those are just those are those are really nice assignment fees for housing, and these just the referral fees for the commercial. So those are the type of numbers we're playing with that we're willing to pay that type of referral fee for a buyer. All right, my goal here tonight, uh, whether you know a lot about real estate or if you don't know anything about real estate, the goal here tonight is to show you that. There is an option out there to change your financial situation and change it quickly. And obviously a lot of people have made their fortunes over the, the time of man uh, that we've been on this planet through real estate because either you have to shelter, have shelter to live or shelter to provide for businesses and, and, and the services and products that they may, they may offer. So what is wholesaling? And this is my, I guess, street version of it. And maybe I'll the next uh, flip and I'll put up an actual definition there, um, technical, more dictionary or, uh, or something like that instead of me explaining the process. But here's a short version of it. Basically, what you're doing as a wholesaler is that you're taking, you're identifying a great deal with an actual owner of a property. It can be residential or commercial, but for the sake of this flip or not, we're going to say how a house you located a great deal and how you locate that deal can come in a lot of ways. It can come through marketing and advertising where people are calling you saying, Hey, I got a house for sale or you do it by research or you found something online, however, but you're in the seller talk, you, ne you negotiate a price that works based on where the property is located and the condition that it's in. Now, obviously, you have to know what's a deal and what's not a deal because there are plenty, there's plenty of real estate out there for sale. It's not a deal as far as what's based on what we consider a deal in the wholesale world, but assuming that it is a deal. So the next step would be to place it on the contract. Once you have the property on the contract, now you have something of value that you're controlling for whatever 30 or 45 day period that you and the seller have agreed upon. Whether you have a buyer's list already or not, if you advertise that actual property and it's a deal, in most markets, you shouldn't have that property longer than a week if you're doing an effective uh, amount of marketing or advertising mm -hmm. the property. So assuming that you have a property in place, um, assuming you have a, a, a property, uh, a, I mean a buyer in place at 
a higher price than the contract that you have with the seller. Just to use real numbers here, so you had a contract with the seller for thirty thousand dollars, and the house would well just to sort of back up a little bit. The house in in excellent condition, what we call ARV after repair value, or simply put, what would the house appraise for in excellent condition? We'll say a hundred thousand dollars, but for whatever reason you got in the contract for thirty thousand dollars, okay. You advertise the property at forty nine thousand. You have a buyer step to you and say, "Hey, I can't do forty nine, but I can do forty four thousand. All right now, so you have contract A with the seller for thirty thousand and contract B with the buyer for forty four thousand. So the next step is to set up a closing with either a title company and or uh, a closing attorney. So when the property you close on the property, that's when everybody sits down and sign the necessary document to transfer the property over to the buyer. The seller will get their $30,000. You get the difference between $30,000 and $44,000, which is $14,000, and the buyer takes possession of the house. That's a wholesale transaction. Is this something that you should be doing? Well, I'm going to go through a couple of scenarios here. Um, I'm not sure if you ran into this particular uh testimonial interview that I have on my channel on YouTube, student in Memphis. He advertised on Craigslist. He was fortunate because I've never had an excess going there finding the sellers. Maybe I haven't put enough effort into it, but I think pretty much as soon as he put up a, an ad, he got a, a response with a potential deal. This couple, they were moving out of town and they bought an investment property and they needed to liquidate it fast. So they gave him a liquidated mm -hmm. fast price. He placed a contract on the property with $10 earnest money. His take after everything was said and done was $6,440.40. Return on investment, and it sounds ridiculous, but the numbers are what they are. It's just like this money fell out of the sky with 64,344% return. I don't know many businesses you can get that type of return, legal or illegal. All right, let's give another example. I just posted this particular mm -hmm. interview on last night. Some of you all have made, have already seen it. Well, a Baltimore student um, located a property and he put up $1 earnest money and the, the total deal was 32,000. He had a partner, so he had to split the deal, which is 16,000, but the total deal was for $32,000. The return on investment on that is 3 million, one hundred ninety nine dollars uh one hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred dollars percent <laughs> i mean percent i said dollars percent so that's basically infinite you, you get the point here and the point is is this something you need to be doing i'll let you answer that for yourself for those of you all that who don't know me uh and who i am and my little story and how i got uh involved in real estate uh, and so on. For those of you that are here regularly, um, go to the bathroom or something. Give me about 10 minutes to go through this, this process or whatever. Then you may want to hear it again. I'm an entrepreneur first. I'm not sure where the bug came from in my early 20s when I was in college. I'm not one of those people where I've been selling lemonade since I was eight, nine years old. It just something just got into me in my early 20s when I was in college. Um, I was in college and I was one of those people that I knew that uh, college was not going to provide the income that I wanted, especially the degrees that I was pursuing. Um, so with that being said, I still finished college more so to put a smile on my mom's face than to actually help me as an individual as far as financially or, or building a life for myself and uh, those that I care about. Uh, but I wouldn't give anything from for the time I spent in college because it helped me grow up as a man. But while I was in college, I had this brilliant idea that I was going to take my student loan money and I was going to buy used cars and sell them and become a millionaire. OK, I actually got a dealer's license and started going to dealer's auction. I used to love it. The one I think it was every Wednesday or Thursday. I can't remember the date. It's been a long time ago, but. Used to love it. I had my three thousand or four thousand dollars in hand, and I would go out there, and they had a is it just a huge facility, you know, just just 
hundreds, but probably a couple of thousand cars out there at once. And they had a uh, like an actual strip where you could test drive the cars. Those cars, I don't care if the car was 10 years old, it would look like it was off the showroom floor. It may have 180,000 miles on it, but it'll look brand new. That's the problem. They will look brand new, but they'll be pieces of junk. And if you're not mechanically inclined, you would easily get your hat handed to you, which I did. And so um, I got out of that, obviously, in uh, 1995. Went to uh, Daytona Beach for Black College back, back Black College uh, Spring Break or whatever they used to call it back then. Uh, and one of my brother's friends uh, met us. He was from Orlando. He met us up there, and he had started a mobile car wash, and said he had did six figures. So hey, I, you know, I couldn't wait to get back to Birmingham to uh, buy me a van, a water tank, and a pressure washer, and, and, and start to make it happen. I did just that. That's the type of person I am. Found out about it one week, bought, I had a little money from same thing, resources from my student loans or whatever. Uh, I had a little money. I took action. I didn't debate on it. I didn't research it. I didn't do all of that. You know, people say I've been looking at this for two years. You know, I don't get that, you know, but it is what it is. Maybe that's why I didn't, I wasn't successful with it. So long story short, as long as there was summer, 95, 100 degrees was it's possible here in the south i was fine i can handle that but when it we moved on into october november just like it is now it's in the 30s <laughs> not gonna happen you know i hate cold weather i hate cold weather it would take a lot of money for me to live in an area where it's cold most of the most of the time not hating on or downplaying where some people are uh it, it will be very difficult very difficult so I knew I couldn't do that because you can't run a business that's seasonal like that. There are some seasonal businesses, but for what I was trying to do, it, it wasn't going to work. So I always was thinking of crazy ideas or things I wanted to do or what I thought was going to be a good service or product. I always look for things that, you know, wouldn't cost that much money, but you can make money. Not a lot of things out there like that, but they do exist. If you got some creativity and uh, take action, but I could never figure anything out like that. So I got into some, uh, some people convinced me to get into some network marketing. Problem with that is I'm not a salesperson. You have to somewhat be a salesperson, but get other people to believe what you believe. I know it may seem like I'm like that, but I'm really not. I'm just, I just tell you information. I just give you information from experience uh, that I have, and I, but a lot of people are interested in that experience. So I don't feel like I'm selling when I, when I talk about real mm -hmm. estate and, and the stuff that I've done or whatever. So. Uh, but just when you start talking about network marketing, uh, that's a form of sales. You got to convince the people, people what you believe. And I'm not good at that. You know, I'm, I'm just not. Now, if I can put something out there and people contact me or whatever, hey, I can handle that. But if I have to reach out to you to make business happen, it's not going to happen. That's part of the reason why I'm paying hefty bounties uh, on these commercial properties because that's grunt work. You know, I can find the deals, structure them. Uh, negotiate all that stuff, but getting out there, just putting them out there because you really don't want to advertise those, just go crazy advertising. Uh, that's why I don't have the addresses on the uh, actual offering mem memorandums or uh, the flyers. They, they don't know why they call them offering memorandums, but really just a flyer with the information. Uh, so I, I would rather uh, let people that are good at reaching out, networking, prospecting, and I just give us some of the money. So, but anyway, uh, fast forward, 2002, October 2002, um, my friend, uh, he, he and his now wife were going to school to become realtors. And the guy that normally taught the real estate course, I'm assuming you guys can still hear me, say yes, somebody say yes. Uh, but the guy that was uh, teaching the real estate course was absent and the guy that substituted for him, he didn't talk about being a real estate agent. He talked about, he talked about um, being a real estate investor and creative ways of real estate investing with no money down. So my friend, he knew I was an entrepreneur. So he mentioned some of the things, he mentioned some of the things that uh, the guy was talking about. It was interesting, but I didn't act on it. All right, cause I still didn't, I, I just didn't. I don't know why I didn't. So fast forward a couple of months later, I was at my mom's house for uh, Christmas. Couple, it was two days after Christmas. I was up early waiting on her to prepare breakfast. 
which were homemade biscuits with syrup, you know, my favorite. And um, not healthy, but it's still my favorite. And uh, I was up and I was watching TV and I stumbled across one of Carlton Sheets, No Money Down infomercials, which, you know, we had all seen them over the years. You don't see them now, but, you know, back in the uh, 90s, I guess the 80s, they were on every Saturday and Sunday morning, all you know, for two or three hours. You just change channel and it was somewhere else. So um, I caught it about halfway through one of the infomercials, and I said, let me find one from beginning to end. Which they didn't tell you anything. It just, oh, I made $10,000. Carlton helped me make this, helped me make that. But it really didn't tell you how they made the money. So at that time, my mom didn't have internet. So when I uh, waited until I got back to Birmingham, and I went to this message board that I used to frequent, it was ablake.net, and uh, it was an entrepreneur message board, online entrepreneur message board. And I posted a question, does Carlton Sheets program really work? Only one person replied, yes, it does, but Ron LeGrand's course is better. So I did a search, found Ron's website. He had uh, a bundle of courses rolled into one for like 1500 bucks. Uh, a lot of money. I, I didn't have that at the time. And so found another option on the website where they had a condensed version of everything for $69.99 with shipping 80 bucks. I got that. It was in cassette form. And all it was was just teasers. You know, great. They put it was a great, it was a great uh, promotional product because it, it really made you feel like you could do this, but it wasn't enough information that you could just go out and do it, especially with someone like me that didn't know anything about real estate. So from there, um, I had made up my mind that if I had to get a second job, I'm going to save that $1,500 and buy the bundle of courses. So a couple of days later, I thought about eBay. I said, let me do a search on his name and see if um, there are any auctions out there on his, on his information, on his courses. And so there was. And so I bid it on the auction, lost the auction. But back then, I guess you uh, sellers could contact bidders. And the guy emailed me and uh, asked me would I be interested in uh, buying a, a burnt copy or in the hood we call it a bootleg copy of the course. And so we agreed upon $400. Got the course. It was like Christmas. And it took me about three weeks to go through all of it because there was, um, it was wholesaling houses. Uh, I'm assuming y'all can y'all still see my screen. I just got a notification. Uh, it was wholesaling houses, uh, retailing houses, which is basically buying, fixing, and flipping, uh, for sale by owner, owner financing, lease options. So I listened to it all. I didn't know I didn't want to listen to but what, what appealed to me, which would only probably have been wholesaling at that time, maybe lease options. And so I was just on information overload. But if I didn't get anything out of it, two things stuck. Wholesaling stuck out to me, and I knew I needed to get my phone ring, which was going to be right down my alley because I didn't want to reach out to people for business. I wanted people to put the uh, put the uh, advertisement out there and let people contact me if they need what I had to offer, which was buying houses. So bandit signs attracted me. So I bought a set of bandit signs. I overpaid for them. I bought 50 signs, spent $250 on those. I didn't know any better. Uh, you can get a lot better deal than that now. Obviously, you can get 250 signs for that amount of money. But uh, I didn't know any better. So I put them out on a Sunday morning, started getting calls that Monday. The first two calls were actually deals. The first call um, was a, a seller that it was going to be a lease option opportunity. I'll tell you about that deal, which eventually blew up in my face. Put the deal on the contract, explain to him how the lease option was going to work, that I was going to do a lease with an option to purchase with him and then find a tenant buyer. They was going to give me a down payment. I'll make a payment to him and I'll get a little extra over. And at some point, she's going to cash him out of the deal. He was fine with that because he couldn't afford the payments on the house anymore. He lived somewhere else. His mom left him the house. He just needed a solution. So it appeared that we were on the same page. All right, I advertised the property. Lady stepped forward. I met her at an old Charlie's. It's not there on Center Point Parkway in Birmingham. If, if you ever see this or you're on here now, you know anything about the ham. She gave me $5,000 sitting there uh, about this time one evening. And you know, I just couldn't believe it. Man, this stuff, it, it may even actually work. So the guy that owned the property was a handyman and it needs some repairs and she wanted some stuff done. So I said, well, 
I just let Mr. Such and Such uh, take care of that for you. And uh, so they were supposed to meet. So in that time frame, a friend of mine that I worked with when I was working a job, I was working at Bell South, which is now at and He did mortgages on the side. So I, you know, I was just barter, you know, just trying to help a friend, help a, you know, somebody I was doing business with, with the real estate. And so um, my friend mentioned, said, hey, yeah, Ty, I found somebody to move in your house. The lady already has given him $5,000. The seller felt that I should have given him half of that money. He never conveyed that to me. So when the lady was supposed to meet him at the house so they could go over what repairs he would do on the house for her, he came over there with a just horrible attitude, told the lady to get off his property. Tyrone didn't own it. And, you know, she or he's going to call the police. So the lady called me just crying, hysterical. And I asked her, where was she right now? And I would bring her her money because she had thought she had got scammed. And so I had already spent $700 of it. So I had to come back up with that. And at that time, I really wasn't making no money now. So I had to come up with that $700. You know, I had, you know so anyway, so I, I met the lady, gave her her money. So I called the... Uh, the owner, he and I had a heated dispute, you know, and long story short, he told me if he ever see me again, it wouldn't be pretty. But I hope, uh, uh, thankfully, I haven't seen him. <laughs> so anyway, um, that was 14 years ago. So anyway, um, the second call was two sisters. This is what I'm talking about, tired landlords. Their mom died, left them a house. So they had, you know, a lot of people, we're not going to sell mama house. We had too many members there. We we're just renting out to some needy family members. And of course, your family members are not going to pay you. So they got tired of going back and forth with that, fixing the house, people not paying them, fixing the house, paying taxes. So they called me. Uh, we agreed, agreed upon $20,000. I showed up at their house in my 1985 Toyota Celica white convertible. It was 2003. So the car is 18 years old, if my math is correct. And they thought I had a million. They thought I had the money in my in 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 my in uh, with me on me twenty grand on. Me. I said no, it didn't work like that. <laughs> I told them we had to go through a process. So they signed the agreement. I advertised the property, um, and in the newspapers, that's not effective at all now. I advertised the property in the newspaper, and this realtor called me, told me he had a client that would buy the property for twenty five thousand. So I had it under contract with twenty thousand. So I explained to the realtor, hey, I'm, I'm wholesaling this, man. So blah, blah, blah. You know, I got in the contract 20 said, well, in order for us to do this deal, I need half of that. And I didn't know any better. I probably wouldn't have even done that, you know, because he hustled me. But anyway, I was I didn't know any better, so it didn't matter. I, I, don't, I don't care if people make money, but his client is going to pay him. I shouldn't have to pay him also, you know, but that, that was that's how realtors are. So anyway, especially if you don't know any better. And so uh, we, well, I met these guys in a parking lot, in a, uh, a shopping center parking lot. They gave me $500. Um, $500 earned money. We signed an agreement. A week or so later, we met at their attorney's office. And I didn't know what was going on, really. But the girlfriend that I had at the time uh, said, you think you ought to wear a suit? I said, no, nah, I don't think I have to do that because those guys showed up in uh, tank tops and flip-flops. And I don't think this... Uh, I don't think so. And so anyway, uh, we closed on the property, picked up my $2,500 check. It wasn't, it's, not, it wasn't, it's not a lot of money, but it is a lot of money. For me, it might as well have been $250,000 because, number one, I seen that it worked. The other thing is uh, I had failed at so many things before that, you know, that that was it. So over the next 12 months, I did 10 deals. I probably could have quit then my job, but I had uh, done that before a couple of years before that and nearly starved to death. And so, you know, I worked at my job three years before I quit, you know. So I just came in one day and uh, super doc, the supervisor said something to me uh, that I didn't like. And I reported out for the next two weeks, went up there on a Sunday on uh, April 30th, uh, turned in my uh, two weeks notice. Um, I'm still, well, I had already reported, I reported out. So I just turned in my resignation. And so I put one on the clerk's desk, supervisor's desk. And Hey, May 1st, officially 2006, I dropped the mic on my job. That's been 10 plus years ago now. So I look back, been fortunate enough to still be able to eat and keep the lights on. But, um, anyway, so as I mentioned, I felt a lot of, a lot of things, um, 
from a small town, less than a thousand people, no smarter than you are from Bama. Purpose of me saying all of that is that if I can do this, you can do this. It's all about action. It's all about action. Don't be afraid to make a mistake. I still make them today. It's just the mistakes should be a lot less than your successes. You're not going to ever know everything. It's just not possible. I still learn stuff now. Um, students bring stuff to me. I had never even looked at it the way they look at it. You know what I'm saying? They may have never even done a deal, you know, but I know something good when I hear it or it can be useful. So um, what I discovered uh, in the 13 years, I was 14 now, I'll change that. Uh, is that there is a way to cheat and wholesaling is the way to do that. But before we get to that point, uh, most people think they need a ton of money. Uh, they think they need, uh, need to have a real estate license. You don't, if you want one, that's fine. That's on you, but you don't need one to do this biz. Um, books are fine. I'm not a reader. Uh, there are very few books that are not going to be upsells going to be very few books that are going to go into detail on what you actually need to do. And that still will depend on your level of uh, what you understand about it already. Um, because a lot of the stuff that I know in commercial real estate is because of what I know in houses and just how to put deals together. I just needed to educate myself on, 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 on the, what makes a deal and what make, what, what's not a deal, what, what, what's important to the, to the buyer themselves, and then you can figure out how to make the money. You found out where the money is, and then obviously where it's going, you stand in the middle. Uh, I didn't come up with that, but I like it. Um, but taking pointless business classes in college, I did have a BA, a business administration minor for the history. Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, my major is history. I think it's African American. I don't even remember. African American history. What am I going to do with that? Anyway, uh, all of us had went to seminars. Even after I was making money, I was still going to seminars because I was still, I was looking not to really sign up or anything and not really the process of them putting the deals together because that's pretty much the same. But I was always looking for different ways to, to, to find more leads, to find more deals. That, that was my interest. But I really, I, I eventually realized that there was nothing new under the sun. And there's a lot of technology that has changed since I got into it 14 years ago. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's still uh, the same as far as putting an actual deal together. And um, like I like I said earlier, that when I first got started, I was on information overload. Um, that was part of uh, what uh, Vic explained on the uh, interview we did, the guy that spent the $32,000 in Baltimore, that, you know, I was asking why you didn't call me for this or that. You know, he said, man, I just had, you know, I was just, I had so many mentors and stuff or whatever, and you probably don't want to really deal with, it, you know, at, at any time. He said, I just didn't. So, but anyway, just on information overload, just, just too much coming at you. So with all of that being said, I want to mention again, don't let, don't let me forget about the two free courses I'll give away at the end of the uh, question and answer period of the Flippinar. So let's get into it. Co-wholesaling and J, JV deals. All right, so you all still with me, right? Yes. Okay, all right, good, 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 good. All right, co-wholesaling, what is it? All right, you're a wholesaler, and Bobby is a wholesaler, whether you all know each other or not. One of you all have a deal in the contract. The other possibly has a buyer or... The one that has a contract uh, on the property, he's looking for a buyer and wants to go through you. All right, flipped it. And you you have it under contract and you're trying to get someone to help you find a buyer. I've done these, but I'm not as open to doing, but I want to talk about it. I try to bring stuff to you, whether I actually do a lot of it or not. I've done it, you know, but I, it may be an avenue that a lot of people that can get into and maybe get their feet wet, make a little money, and then you choose. But I'm all about control and the 
the the less the few the less people that we have in the deal, the the the, the easier it is, or the less complicated the deal will be. All right. So, um, so the first thing, like I said, is a wholesaler contacts you, and we'll just go with this that you have a property. Okay. So obviously, that's in my opinion, that's the best prop. That's the best position to be in. So the first thing most of them want to know, they want to know how they're going to get paid if they release this buyer to you. Now, I'm willing to do 50-50 in a lot of cases, or I'll give them my option. I'll say we can do 50-50, or I give you a price. I give you a price, and I don't care what you make over top of that. <clears throat> but if we do, if we do it that way, if I give him a price, then we're going to have to put it on the contract. And if we do that, I'm treating them just like a buyer, just like he's a cash buyer. I need 500, probably a thousand dollars earnest money. In order for me to lock my property up with someone, I'm going to need that thousand non-refundable earnest money, especially with a wholesaler. It's definitely going to be non-refundable if I can produce a clear title. He ain't getting that back. Um, so that's if, if I give him a price that's higher than my price. Now we're just going to split. I tell him, hey, I got in the contract for for, for 25000 He said, well, I got somebody that'll probably pay about thirty-four for it. I said, well, we'll just split it 50-50. That's nine grand. We'll just both make 4500 All right? So it, it'll be up to him on how he wants to paper up on that. Now, I normally don't have anything in place um, because, I, you know, especially if I got it under contract, you know, I, I it's up to you. If you don't trust me, then I totally understand. Send me something. Let me look at it. I tell people, you know, some of you may have heard me say that. And I'll look at it if I'm comfortable with our signing, and we'll go from there. Um, so, or, or, and I, but most of the ones that I've done, we didn't have anything in place. Um, I just paid them. Uh, and I don't mind paying them 50% of the deal. The way I look at it is I probably didn't even know the buyer that they know. And that he he paid me, or I paid him, however you want to look at it, to have access to that buyer now. Because once we sit down at the closing table, oh, I'm going to get his contact information. You know what I'm saying? It's not like, I'm not tired, but same thing, though. If I bring a buyer to the table, I understand that a wholesaler is going to have an opportunity to get his contact information. Those buyers are not mine exclusive. I had a lady, I had a lady actually tell me, that any deal that that buyer does, she should get paid off of it. I said, I don't do business like that because I won't require the same thing of you. Oh, we didn't do business. She 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 refused to do business with me. That that's, that was fine. You know, it didn't make any difference. But um, it is what it is. So I'm not going to do something that that especially when I'm, I'm talking about we're on the same level as a wholesaling position that I wouldn't accept myself is what I'm trying to say. So the other thing, the other side of it is that you see a property advertised, you just from the ad, you probably know it's a wholesale deal. You contact them because you may have a buyer ready to go or something like that. And um, then it becomes you're somewhat in their ballpark and what their requirements are for you to do a deal. Again, it's still going to be up to you on how you control the deal. And his motivation, he could be just like a motivated seller because his time is running out. So he may be apt to do do it the way you want to do it. But the main thing is just ensuring that your name is on documents, especially when you're producing a buyer. I would probably just go ahead and do a contract with that wholesaler at a price. And then whatever I make over that, you know, that's that's probably the way I would do it. I wouldn't sign any JV agreement stuff. You know, I guess it could be presented or whatever, but we need a purchase and sales agreement with my my name and my buyer's name on it at some point. And then I'll sign a purchase and sales agreement with the host. So we still can work those numbers out that it's 50-50, but that's the, that's the best way to ensure. And you can only do this stuff when cash is involved, uh, this type of stuff where you can have double assignments uh, for one property or whatever. So at the, at the end of the day, okay, so once you get past that point and a wholesaler's contacted you, we'll just go with that for right now, you still have to analyze the deal. Now, sometimes a lot of guys will have properties under contract, and it's not an actual deal. That's why they're having trouble moving it. 
Now, sometimes they'll have a smoking deal and just don't know how to move it. Um, I think I heard someone say some people know how to how to find great deals, but don't know how to to move. Don't know how to get to get a buyer for them. And some people know how to find buyers, but don't know how to find deals for them. So it could be it could be that situ one of those situations. And you have an opportunity because you do have buyers, you do know how to move properties, and you just take advantage of it. Now, as far as um, when you start talking about virtual wholesaling, if you're going to virtual wholesale, now that's the way to go, in my opinion, because now you have someone on the ground and you can produce a buyer, whether it's locally there or out of town, then now you have someone on the ground that can keep the seller and the buyer are separate. That's the biggest. That's the biggest hurdle with uh, virtual wholesaling. That I know a lot of people say uh, it's easy and all this stuff, but trust me, that's always your biggest hurdle when with a wholesale deal. Once you have an actual property on the contract and you have a buyer interested, it's trying to coordinate and making sure the deal doesn't go south because the seller. Or the buyer normally is going to be the seller side doesn't understand the process, which they don't need to because they're going to get what they're supposed to do and it just can be confusing. With that being said, so analyzing the deal, um, hopefully the reason that they haven't sold it is because they haven't been able, they don't know how to find the buyer. That, that's, that's, that's what you're hoping for. After you look at the numbers, because the numbers are going to be what they are, what they are because you can put a ton of properties on the contract but for cash buyers to show up and pay for it, it just needs to simply be uh, to be a no-brainer of a deal. You know, that's, that's I don't care what level of it that you're in, it, it has to be a no-brainer of a deal. Now, sometimes you'll struggle to move a property, and you only need one person. Uh, I've had that to happen a lot to me out of all the properties I did. I only had one person to actually make an offer. I've had people to, to look at a lot of properties, and no offers ever come through. I got one right now, I can't. I, I, I probably get two or three calls a day on it. <laughs> and nobody calls me back to make offers on it once they go out there and see it. So, and I don't have much room to go on it, but that, that's, that's the way it is sometimes or whatever. And then other problems, I think it shouldn't be that great deal. And, and hey, I get a buyer the next day. It's just some of it is no rhyme, no rhyme or reason on it sometimes. So, we can go back when I say control or not, we can go back to where you, what's your position? Are you the one with the property on the contract or you're the one that's contacting the wholesaler and he has the control. So uh, I'm big on that. Uh, I'm big on that. I'll walk in a minute if I don't have a certain level of control over a particular deal. Um, people call and I had to learn this the hard way. So guys, you tap into my mistakes when 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 I'm talking, and or especially when I'm coaching you, you're tapping into my mistakes that I, I advise you not to make the same mistakes. I, I don't know everything. But I made a lot of mistakes, and I I can tell you what not to do in a lot of situations. I can tell you what to do also, but what not to do. And when people call me, I, you can only imagine the number of calls I get. I get all kind of calls, and, and I welcome them all or whatever. I'm, but, but I'm like anyone else. I have my good days and bad days. Or whatever, but um, I get people calling me and they say, "Well, um, I got a property and blah blah blah." And I, I I don't do a lot of that because I can get wore out there, just not enough time in the day. So I try to stay consistent, but I do listen to people or whatever. But the thing is, a lot of times they don't even have the property on the contract, or they're going my partner or somebody. Nah, I, I don't. It's all you're already about to try to interject me into it. And if you're not dealing directly with the seller of the property, I'm normally not going to be interested. I'm just not. Or the broker. I, I, I can understand they got a broker. That's, that's the commercial side of it. You're probably rarely going to deal with the seller. It's always going to be a broker. But I'm talking about where, you know, it's, it's you, then somebody else, maybe the broker, then the seller. Or it's you, somebody else, and then the seller. That's too many people for me. It needs to be you. I have it on the contract, and 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 that's it. And that now I still may not be interested because of well, if it's housing, but because it just spread me too thin. Because if I knew you knew what a deal was, then I'd be a fool to turn it down. If you're calling me out of the blue, say, "Hey, can you help me?"
but I know a lot of times people don't know what a deal is called. It's easy to get properties on the contract, but is it a deal or not? So we get to the paperwork, which I somewhat already have went through that. It just depends on what your position is as far as the paperwork. Again, I like purchase and sales agreements. These referral contracts, the JV contracts, all that stuff, guys, it really, at the end of the day, they really don't mean anything because you're not an agent. See, you, you, you're now acting in that role of a real estate agent because you don't own the property. But if you interject with a purchase and sales agreement, that gives you some interest within the deal. That's why I, if I'm going to do any type of wholesale, wholesale to wholesaler, um, I got to be on a purchase and sales agreement. So when people contact me about these properties that we're uh, marketing, and I just, you know, I'll tell you, and, and some of you may be on the call, I don't have anything that I can see, but if you got something, I'll take a look at it. If I'm comfortable with it, I'll sign it. Most time it's nothing but, you know, two or three sentences. And I'll pay them if they find a brow, I'll sign that, whatever. But I'm going to pay you. I'll, I'm going to pay you because if you're that good, and I know some scoundrels out here, but I don't know why someone would do this. If you could find a buyer for me for a multi-million dollar property or a high six figures property, and I don't pay you, that is stupid. You, you've shown me a lot. Obviously, I've made some money for you to produce a buyer. I want you to go out there and do it again. And the only way you're going to go out there and do it again for me or whoever is that I pay you. That just makes sense. But, you know, I guess if there's people out there just, yeah, man, I, I don't get that. Okay. Um, <laughs> as I said, with buyers, depending on what side of it you're on, if you have a property on the contract and a wholesaler wants to bring you a buyer, hey, I, again, I'm, I'm willing to work with them. You know what I'm saying? We can discuss the numbers on how and what everybody's going to be comfortable. Both of us will be comfortable with getting paid. But I look at it, hey, it's going to probably be a buyer that I'm not aware of. Or if on the flip side of it, if a wholesaler has a property, he reaches out to me and say, hey, you got a buyer for this property? I look at the number. Yeah, if I got a buyer, bring it to the table. But I'm comfortable with now that wholesaler being able to use that buyer. They don't, they don't, they don't belong to me. These, these people uh, go wherever they can find a deal. So how do you get paid? It's all about, it goes back to the paperwork. I want to be in the position where I'm where I'm on. If I'm in the wholesale position where it's my property, obviously I'm already there because I have a contract with the seller. But if I'm producing my buyer, I'm going to be on a purchase and sales agreement with my buyer. You know, that's that's the only way that I'm going to do it. And I would strongly suggest that you do the same thing. So again, it may be a situation when you when you go to closing, it may be two assignment fees paid, but it's cash, so it's not going to make a big deal at all. If they're going to do the deal, uh, how many people they pay as far as assignment fees, it will not it will not matter. So I hope just this is my thinking on it. It's all still it still boils down to control, depending on what side of it on you're on, whether you have a property under contract. Or if you're trying to produce a buyer for a wholesaler that has it under contract, I want to be on a purchase and sales agreement with either a seller or a purchase and sales agreement with the buyer. And then if me and the wholesaler need to sign a purchase and sales agreement to commence our deal, then that's how it will be done. But that's the only way I'm going to do it. Now, the other ways out there, people do it or whatever, obviously. But that's the way I'm going to do it. So this is a way that you can virtual wholesale. But obviously, you got to bring something to the table, either the deal, either the deal and or um, uh, uh, when I say the deal, the seller or you bring a buyer to the table. Um, if you're going to virtual wholesale. I would reckon. Well, I guess it really doesn't matter. Uh, you could be on both sides of it. You know, but it's a, the, the reason that uh, co-herald wholesaling will work with virtual wholesaling is because you have boots on the ground. So that's that's the way you virtual wholesale is going to do. You got to have boots on the ground in some form of file format. You can try using real estate agents, but uh, they, they're, they're so tough to deal with. So tough to deal with. So. 
let's get to some actual numbers and what this can do for you financially. And most people, um, whether you have financial troubles or not, uh, it seems like we never have enough money. So let's just break it down and just to some, some conservative numbers, three to five deals per month. I'm assuming you guys are still with me. Okay. All right. If you want to do three to five deals per month, the numbers are easy for me. You need to be talking to three to five people per day. That's over a 30 day period. You are, you're really, you're, you're tied as a wholesaler, but in my mind, I'm an advertiser slash marketing firm. Well, my, I, I got to get up and market. I'm slacking right now. I, I need to, I need to get some stuff going right now because my calls are down. So flip man, if it's, it, 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 the so-called flip man don't do what he's supposed to do, he's not going to do deals either. And I got some stuff pending or whatever, but my calls are down. You know, so I, I got to get out there and make it happen in some form or fashion. So let's just break it down. If you do one deal per month and you average five to $7,000 per deal, that's going to probably be about the, the, the lowest it'll go for most markets, in between five to 7000 You're out in Southern California, uh, Bay Area, New York City, maybe South Florida. Uh, yours may range from... 15 to 25,000 on average. You know what I'm saying? But for most people, five to seven, sometimes it's going to be a lot bigger, be a little less. But you know that, uh, so, but we'll just do it on these conservative numbers. So five to 7,000 per deal. So you do one deal a month, one deal per month, right? That's 12 deals per year. So that ranges from $60,000 to $84,000 per year. That normally will change most people finding the situation, whether you're already making that type of money or not. Let's do two deals per month. 5000 to 7000 per deal. That's 24 deals in a year. That's hundred and twenty dollars to $168,000 a year. That changes the situation even more. Let's get a little bit more uh, excited about it. Say five deals per month, averaging five to $7,000 per Per deal, that's 60 deals in a year. That's 300 to $420,000 a year. Uh, they know your name at the bank. Hello, Mr. Taylor. How are you doing today? Doing great. How are you? Remind me again, the two free courses, uh, no coaching that I'll give away at the end. Uh, we're going to go into the question and answer, but let me do a little, a, uh, little house cleaning. You know you can get proof of funds at realpof.com. You know privatemoneylist.net. You can get uh, over 400 private money lenders, 400 cash buyers addresses in different markets around the city, I mean around the country. And if you don't win the two courses, this is a special, and I'll probably run this for, uh, run this tonight, uh, but you can get I'm separating the courses or you can get them both together. Yeah, if you only need wholesaling houses, just the course, no coaching. You can get that just for one payment of 197. If you want the wholesaling apartments course, one payment of 197. Or if you want to do both of them, you can get both of them for 297. All right, you can get that at flip bflipman.com. No coaching though. So you save $97 if you want both of them by taking advantage of the 297 offer. But if you just want one of them, just 197 for the one that you want. Okay, so let's get over here back to my uh, screen and stop sharing. And we will entertain some calls. Darren is not on here. It's not. But I'll be happy to take some questions now. Any questions? What does a typical day look like for you as a full-time wholesaler? 
Um, generally, uh, what I do, um, as I was just mentioning, um, if I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, let me just say that, um, is that I'm going to um, either be putting together a direct mail campaign. I'll spend a couple hours on that and or, um, you know, doing some bandit sign. I, and I still do my own bandit sign because I'm not satisfied when I paid people to do it in the past. And plus, it just is a way of keeping me a little humble, no matter how much money I may, you know, put in my pocket. Um, so, and then, but I slack on that because I just have so much stuff going as far as the commercial. I also spend a lot of time uh, dealing with the commercial side of it, where there's me uh, providing support on deals or me looking for deals. But I spend a lot of time on that. Um, so I spend a lot, you know, so it just a vary depending on the day as far as what's a typical day for me. Um, someone says, is it always 50 for JVs? Is everything negotiable? But, but normally that's what I'm, that's what I want to go with because that's what I'm willing to pay someone. So that's what I'm, I'm willing to work for also if I'm provi providing a buyer. All right, someone said, what is the process on how long you keep the bandit signs up and when do you take them down? I never take them down. There's no reason to put them up if you take them down. The only way you're going to get, get the uh, response that you need is that they stay up. Now, if you're in a market where they just, they just not going to stay up and you do have to take them down, um, or uh, let me put it like this, if you can put them up but they take them down, I would just be a weekend uh, bandit, you know, I mean, weekend warrior. So uh, over time, people will get used to seeing them on the weekend and then you will probably eventually start receiving calls, you know, but you may have to go through a couple of, uh, a couple, uh, a couple of uh, orders, you know, but I would be putting them out, especially if you don't see them anywhere. So that means people are not used to seeing them so that you're going to start to receive some calls at some point. All right, so on a JB deal, you're you're saying you would actually have three contracts working? Yes, uh, depending on what side. Well, 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 three contracts in the sense that I'm I'm going to probably be on two of the contracts. Whether it's me and the seller, and the wholesaler, or me and the buyer and the wholesaler, but there's still three contracts at some point. How do you keep the seller buyer from knowing you offered the buyer a higher price? Well, that, that's that's part of what I, what I was talking about with virtual wholesaling. Because the buyer, most buyers are not going to buy without seeing the property. And a lot of times, well, I know a lot of if you're virtual wholesaling, the only person going to be able to show it is the seller. So you're going to have to have somebody on the ground to keep them apart, you know, from discussing pricing and what's going on. But you can be transparent with your with your buyer. Uh, but they will eventually know at closing because I do assignments, you know, so it's right there in the paperwork. But before then, they don't know. Uh, that's that's common. They, they, they don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, do you give a copy of the contract to the seller for their records after selling the deal? The only contract that they need is between them and the wholesaler. Anything else is is not of, of any use to them. Are there certain areas you target for putting up bandit signs? Um, if, if you've never done it before, what I always recommend to my students is putting them up in areas where you where 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 they uh, where they already uh, exist. It, obviously, you have the idea that, hey, I don't see any in this area. I'm going to put some up. But normally, it's already been tested. And bandit signs are not new at all. And so normally, you're going to be wasting your time and money. But you can always test. You just never know. Uh, you can always test, but that's normally how, how it works. Have you had a... Have you had a deal where... Um, I'm not sure about the question, but have you had a deal where were made a deal where another wholesaler on the opposite end 
I, I assume you say I've ever been involved with a where another wholesaler has been involved. Yeah, if that's what you're asking, yes, I have. If you don't have a buyer, if you don't yet, if you don't have a buyer's list yet, what would be the steps to get your wholesale deal sold? You just advertise it. Uh, that's all you have to do. It's not hard to give away money. Just advertise it. Craigslist, Zillow, banner signs in the area, handwritten signs. Um, just advertise it. If it's a deal, people are going to call you. You know, that, that's how you build your list. You know, you may have 10 people call you. You can only sell it to one, the other nine. You're going to keep that, their information for future deals, but that, that that's how you um, that that's how you uh, move your deals. That's how you do it. I'm going to share my screen again here. I want to just make sure you have this reminder. Um, there's one second, guys. I'm trying to, okay, there we go. There we go. All right, so, um, what was the last question? Let me see here. Uh, let me see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you don't, have it. yeah, but I was saying about the buyers, but that's how you build a buyers list. All right. Uh, how did you manage working a job in wholesaling when you first began? Uh, what did that look like? Uh, well, uh, at the time I had a job where when I worked at Bellside, I worked a split shift. We used to go in at 7 a.m., leave at 11, 11 30, and come back at 3 up until I think six. So it was like a three to four hour window there. So I used to get a lot of stuff done there, but on the days that even when I worked seven to three or eight to four or eight to five, whatever it was, um, I just made stuff happen. You know, now when time changes, when you have day more longer daylight hours, when it gets dark, you know, I know in, uh, uh, in the central time zone, when it gets dark at seven forty-five, eight 8 o'clock, you know, I may get off work at four, you know, still four hours of daylight get a lot of things done. I, I just made it happen. And then once I started making money, you know, we could change shifts with people. I, you know, hey, people used to beg me because I would pay $100 just to change a shift with someone. You know, I would change, uh, pay $100 to go pick up 6000 You know what I'm saying? So I just I just made it work. Uh, you just, just make it work. You know, you, it's just all about time man management. You know, you may have to do everything on the weekend or your days off schedule uh, looking at because whenever you're looking at properties, you may have a hundred people look at uh call you or if you're doing what you need to be doing correctly and you know you only gonna make you may only go look at five to seven of those properties out of 100 people that called you but i'm not going to go look at something unless there's a deal over the phone as far as the price or close to it all right All right, someone said, what would you write on that small banner sign to catch someone's attention fast to sell your wholesale deal? House for, house for sale, probably being red, um, 17000 cash, and then my phone number. That's it. You don't really have that much room, and it's, all, it's very important that you use the right markers. Uh, does your course cover lease options? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Don't mention anything about it. So totally different ball game. What's your experience with probate properties? Uh, I think I'm going through a situation with that right now. I don't know if we're going to, you know, it'll be a while before we close that deal. There's nothing I seek out. Whenever you t uh, use absentee list, for me, it, it it targets everything uh probates landlords out of town owners uh divorce you know it 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 tackles all types of motivations when you do direct mail with motor so i don't specifically target probate if it comes my way through my marketing efforts 
then I'll work it. You know, uh, that's me. But no, there's there's a there's a niche there. Uh, out of all these deals you made, uh, what is the worst got sold? And if you remember, how much did it sell for? How I'm I'm not sure about the question. You mean the least amount I've ever made on a deal? If you could be a little bit more clear, Abana, I think that's where his name is pronounced. Uh, uh, do you have a sale on wholesaling with coaching? Uh, not currently. I don't. Uh, Ty. Oh, the least I've ever made is uh, five hundred dollars. Five hundred big ones, but uh, you can see it here on the screen. I'm assuming the screen is still showing. You can get the wholesaling houses for the one ninety seven, wholesaling apartments for one ninety seven, or you get both for two ninety seven. No coaching. That is available. Any more questions? Or you are, unless you guys are ready for the um, for the free giveaways. Okay, uh, people say they're ready, so uh, we'll we'll roll we'll <laughs> we'll roll with it then, man. All right, uh, so let me let me go through the little deal we got here to do that with. All right. Um, now, whenever I, uh, I'm gonna do the phone number first, whenever um, um, I'm gonna call out the last four of your number, if you'll just um, text me, and um, if you'll just text me uh, with your name, um, then I'll give you instructions on how to get it. All right. Um, let's see here. All right. Um, this is exciting. Uh, um, let's go with the uh, last four digits, four, nine, seven, seven. So text me at two, zero, five. Four nine two three four two five two zero five four nine two three four two five, and the last four digits of their uh, number is four nine seven seven. All right, let me get the uh, the one with the name. All right, let me see here what it's going to spit spit out for us. All right, uh, Leticia Knight, text me. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, Leticia. What's the last four of your number? And then text me from that number at 
So Leticia, I'm waiting on a response, darling. But um, I guess that'll do it. Um, I'll wait on her response, but uh, that'll do it um, for tonight. I hope everyone, um, everyone enjoyed the uh, info. And again, you can take advantage of the uh, course option here, the special at theflipman.com. Uh, the, always remember the, the, the YouTube channel. If you need coaching with that, you can go to flipman.net. Uh, tell friends, family, share it. I'll have a repost of this later on uh, tonight, no later than tomorrow. Uh, but I really appreciate it uh, that uh hopefully this stuff hurt this helps as long as you all are showing up i'll try my best to continue to do it um love man and i'll see you on the uh flip side thanks guys